Hi folks, welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. As I mentioned on the blog uh, a week ago, I have a new mill, and here it is. It is an Atlas horizontal mill, uh, number or model number MFC. I'm quite excited to have it. It's uh, a second mill to a company, Herbie, which is, as everyone knows, uh, a both a newer style mill, a uh, vertical mill, and a CNC. And this is the exact opposite. It's quite old, manual, and it's a horizontal mill. I uh, wanted to take some time today to sort of show you um, a little bit about it and talk about why I purchased this particular I had been looking for a second mill uh, for some time for just the convenience of having um, another mill and I, I had wanted that mill to be manual. Um, having a CNC mill is great but there um, are still things that are I think more convenient to do on a manual mill and frankly I wanted to spend some time um, now that I've become so much more proficient in the shop I wanted to spend some time um, you know working with a manual machine and trying to, to bone up on those skill sets. I wanted a horizontal mill for a couple of reasons. One is that pound for pound, the structure of them tends to make them a little bit more rigid than a vertical mill. And as everybody knows that follows the blog, I'm a bit limited here on size and weight requirements. So this guy, pretty heavy though, um, somewhere between 200 pounds and 350 pounds, depending on whether you take the base off and whether you take the motor off or a few other things. But uh, was able to lift it pretty easily with another individual's help and get it in the back of a truck and then get it into the apartment. Um, the other reason is that, um, as I mentioned, the horizontal nature is, um, I think, very convenient. Some people see it as a drawback or a limiting style of mill. I've currently got a an, an end mill held straight in the two Morris taper spindle, um, but I'll discuss here in a minute other ways to use it. Um, otherwise, it's a typical sort of style mill. It's, I believe from somewhere between the 1940s or 50s. It's got a, uh, a y-axis, lock loosen my jib, um, which has a very nice travel to it. It's got a knee, sort of just like a Bridgeport wheel. This is a little bit stiff, um, but usually easier to do, turn with two hands, but that lifts and lowers the knee. And then you've got an x-axis, which is also turns very nicely. As you're seeing it right now, um, the mill is actually uh, a bit torn apart. There were a couple of things that are need restored on this mill. Um, the spindle arm, which support arm, which I have in right now, I'll gently tip down, has two locking mechanisms. Both of those had relatively minor problems, and so I'm fixing those. Um, the back gear, actually I'll open up the motor here. The back gear mechanism, so, uh, the prior owner had unfortunately destroyed or ground up one of those gears. I'll show you that in a minute actually. So I need to fix that and that's important. Back gear is a very critical um, thing for this mill to slow it down when you're using the larger diameter end mills or especially when you're using the arbor cutters. Um, and then the biggest thing that's we're missing right now is the uh, power feed which um, has a whole mechanism of gears right here and then there's a box which rests off to the side and it connects to this mechanism right here which rotates when you're um, turning the axis to engage the um, x-axis power feed. That's not critical um, to the functionality of the mill but it's definitely important for me because I would envision using this mill as a way to as a second operation mill or sort of an automating type mill in the future and so I want to have that functionality both for the convenience and as also for the uh, improved cut quality. A couple of things I've done already, uh, if you notice, I've replaced the spindle belt. The prior one was quite worn and quite loud because it was worn out. And I wanted to show everybody, I purchased a product from McMaster Car. It's part number 6173K38. And these, this is a replacement for the 5L280, I believe. But basically, it's a twist-style belt. Um, the reason this is important isn't because you can't get the exact replacement belt, but because taking apart the spindle to get the belt across it, I've told, is quite a difficult endeavor. And so, so far, this is working okay. Um, I'll be sure to keep everybody posted on what I think in the future. Um, there's a lot more to cover on this mill, and I'll be sure to cover it in future episodes. Um, and also, as I, as I sort of complete um, some of the missing or replaced parts and build it back up, I'll be sure to show everybody, but it's a great tool. I'm really happy with it so far. 
Um, it can definitely take some beefier cuts. Um, it's not too loud, although it is just a beefier, a little bit louder machine. I've got it on some vibration pads. Um, but I now wanted to talk a little bit about the, some of the accessories that it came. One of the reasons I was attracted to this particular um, mill that was for sale was of what the accessories that it came with. Um, I, I was less interested in purchasing one of these and having to tool up piecemeal with new parts, um, which can be expensive and frankly are sometimes of inferior quality, particularly if you're buying import quality. So this I thought was quite a find. Um, I'll run through these relatively quickly, but I've got the original um, Atlas Vice, which is on a rotating base. I've got a huge variety of end mills, two flute, four flute, um, two sided, one sided. I've got end mill um, holders. You can see one here, you can see one here. Some of the end mills are straight shanks, some like this are already two more tapers, so they go directly in the spindle and then you can see the back is threaded for the drawbar. Um, some end mills are actually brand new despite their age, they've never been used. Um, so that's pretty easy to get, but you, as you can see quite a few end mills. Um, it's got the arbor, which I'll show you in the mill here in a minute. Many pieces of clamping tools. Um, woodruff cutters, tons of woodruff cutters this is a great machine for using those. Inside are shims of varying thicknesses to use with the arbor here to space out your cutters. I've got two fly cutters which go directly in the spindle. More end mills, brand new woodruff cutters. Uh, more end mills, more end mills, more clamping pieces. Um, here's the part of the power feed, uh, which I've got removed right now while I replace some gears. Um, more end mills. Um, and not a single one of these end mills is import. You know, you look at them, a lot of them are Niagara or Cleveland and such. Um, inside the cabinet, it's a little dark. A little dark but I've got to and I've got to reorganize all this but you can see some larger step clamps some larger straps other clamping equipment um, so here's the real reason or what well, main reason that I was really interested in this particular machine is that it came with all of these slitting saws and arbor cutters I'll just scoot down here so you can get a side view of some of the profiles of them but um, these this type of tooling is really where a horizontal mill shines and you can use this for either slotting or parting or even uh, you know, facing off material and removing material that way. And as you can see, when you use step up to these four inch size, that's when you need to use the back here to really turn the machine slowly. Um, but these are all American made, all in great condition, and I'm, I'm really excited to put these to use. Um, and I'll show you, I've set up the mill now for the arbor setup, and as you can see, the arbor is right here, attaches into the two more taper collet and um, uses um, these indexing sleeves to attach the tool itself. There's a vertical, or excuse me, a horizontal support arm which adds rigidity, and then this bar, which I believe this is a an aftermarket replacement, um, attaches to help, you know, give that final amount of rigidity. I don't think this is perfect, always necessary, but uh, a good idea. And so that's it. Um, I will uh, excited to get using this. As like I said, when I get some of the parts back on it, I will. Be sure to put some videos up of uh, the machine in use. Thanks, everybody.